Jefferson Branson just lifted out of his chair and went into the wall. And everyone's going to be like, what? you got to be kidding. Holy crap, man. All right, here we go. I want to be um, so yesterday we learned how to factor if they were just numbers, right? And I think everyone is pretty good on that. Today we're going to add variables. Okay? So, um... If we happen to have, I'm going to start, today I'm going to do it differently. Is that okay? Today I'm actually going to start, nope. I was going to start with like the hardest kind of problem and work my way to the easy ones. But I'll just start off easy. Okay, here we go. Um, if I have the square root of 9x to the 6th. <clears throat> Okay. Mm -hmm. Dot time. It's, it's just built off yesterday. Just continue to build it. Um, <clears throat> so, we treat the, the number just like we did yesterday. So, we're going to ignore the variable first, and we're just going to factor out the number. So, what two numbers multiply together to be 9? Three. 3 and 3, right? So, we... We know that we're going to have basically no numbers left over underneath the square root. They're all going to be brought out. But this is the kicker, x to the 6th. So the way we're going to write this inside of our square root is like this. 3, 3, and then 6 x's. Because if it's x to the 6, that means that there's 6x. It's 10 or straight your Chromebook. Now, you two, Ethan. Okay, so if there's 3, <coughs> 3, 3, and then 6x's, what do you guys think we do next? You look for pairs. So we have a pair of 3's. Everything has a pair here, right? Which is great. So if everything has a pair, what's left over underneath the square root? One, which means that there's no square root because the square root of one is just one. So the square root just goes away. If you get rid of everything underneath the square root, it goes away. So what we're going to bring out is we're going to bring out a three and three x's, right? So what it's going to look like is this or three x cubed is your solution. Okay, <clears throat> so if we happen to have, now look, there's a couple easier ways to be able to do this, and I'm going to teach you a couple little shortcuts here in a little while, but um, if we happen to have at the square root of x to the 8th, how many x's is this? 8, right? How many pairs is it? 4. Does that make sense to everyone? <clears throat> now you can write it out where it has 8x's. Is that 7? And you can find all your pairs. And we know that x to the 8th is going to be shrunk down to x to the 4th is your solution. Or you can do it this way. There's two things in a pair, right? How many times does 2 go into 8? Four times. There's your answer. Okay? So variables can be easily simplified. If we happen to have the square root of y to the 10th, what would that equal? y to the 5th. Okay, so basically, if they're an even exponent, it's extremely easy. If we have the square root of z to the 300th, it'd be z to the 150th. Right? Why is my finger? We're just going to go down here. Alright, so the difference happens is when we have an odd exponent. Okay, so if they're even exponents like all these we've done, they're pretty easy. But if we happen to have like x to the fifth, how many times does 2 go into 5? 2 times, right? 2 goes into 5, 2 times with a remainder of 1. So if it's an odd exponent, you're always going to just have 
the lone variable underneath the square root? The one's right here. So if you think about it this way, let's look at it. If we happen to factor this, it would be five X's, right? Which means we'd have two pairs with one left over underneath. Does everyone see that? Okay. So if we happen to have the square root of y to the 11th on the outside, how many times does 2 go into 11? 5 times with 1 left over would be our solution. Okay, so far so good with me? Okay, so let's start kind of start putting it all together here. Um, if we happen to have the square root of 45x to the 8th, So what are we going to do with the 45? Yeah, so we're going to cut, yes, yeah. So we're going to break the 45 down. And I don't ever break down the variables like I did at the very start way up here. I don't do that because we've now learned the little shortcut. How many times is this 2 going to 8? Four. Four times. So it's even, so we know we're not going to have any X's left over underneath the square root. So, but what I will have is watch. I'm going to start teaching you a couple of my shortcuts. Right here, I'm going to just circle my pair right there. And I know I'm going to have a 5 left over, right? Now, you can put it underneath if you still want. A 5, a 3, a 3, and X to the 8th, like that. Which is fine. Let me see that. It's weird that that thing works. Real weird. Um, so, you can circle your pairs, right? And you know you're going to have a 3 x to the fourth with a five left over underneath right because two goes into eight four times and so on okay let's do another one let's say we had the square root of 27 um, v to the fourth first thing i would always do is i'm going to factor my 27 9 and 3 3 and 3 so underneath my square root, I'm going to have three threes and a V to the fourth. Correct? So I'm going to look for my pairs. There's a pair. So we're going to bring a three out. And how many times does two go into four? Two times. So we're going to bring a two out, which means because that's an even pair. So we're just going to have a three left over underneath. Okay? All right, you guys are going to try one of these on your own. <clears throat> then we'll get a little tougher. If we have the square root of 20, x to the 6. Solve that one. Okay, factor 20 for me, Braxton Hershey. Um, two. Yep. Five two. So underneath our square root, we're going to have a 5, a 2, a 2, and an x to the 6th, right? Okay, do we have any pairs? Good, so on the outside, we're going to have 2 because 2 goes into 6 3 times with a square root of 5 left over. Who got that one right? Good, I love it. All right, um, let's do it if there's an odd exponent. I'm just going to do one of them. If we have 24x to the fifth. Now remember, if you want to do it out longhand, you're very, more than welcome to do it, right? List out five x's. I'm going to do it like this. 12 and 2, 6 and 2, 3 and 2, which is going to give us a 3, a 2, a 2, a 2, and an x to the fifth. Okay. We have a pair of twos, right? And then how many x's are we going to bring out? 
How many times does 2 go into 5? Two, two times. So we're going to bring out this 2 and then 2x's. And left over underneath, we're going to have a 3 times 2, which is 6. And because it's an odd exponent, we have one variable left over underneath. And that would be your solution. Okay, so odd exponents always have one of the variables left over. Does that make sense? Even exponents, no variables. Odd exponents, variables. Okay, try this one on your own. 8w to the 7th. Okay. Um. Who do I want today? Griffin. How many times does what do we got to do to get to eight? Okay, four. Okay, so underneath our square root griff, we're gonna have three twos and then a w to the seventh. So tell me what we're bringing out. Yep. So what's left over underneath? 2w. Oh yeah. Good. Perfect. Who got it right? Okay. Let's play in the world of two variables here for a minute. Um, Braxton, give me your favorite number between 0 and 100. 6 doesn't have any pairs. 27. Good. Wow, that was wild. I was thinking the exact same thing. Okay. So let's say we had 27x to the 10th, w to the 11th. Okay, first things first, we're going to factor the 27. 9 and 3, 3 and 3. Do we have a pair? Yeah, yeah so look right here. I'm just going to do, actually, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. X to the 10th, W to the 11th. Okay, so we have a pair of 3, so we're going to bring a 3 out. How many times, so we're looking at just X. How many times does 2 go into 10? How many times does 2 go into 11? 5 with 1 left over, right? And that would be your solution. Okay, so you treat the variables as differently. Um... Hey, just out of curiosity, we're gonna see who can get this one right. Ready? Get ready, because I'm gonna I'm gonna make one up here. Oh, you always have one more. Twelve. This isn't gonna be much harder than the one I just did, but I want everyone to try it. X cubed. Y to the fifth. Z to the seventh. Dexter Fox, how do we do it? Oh crap, man. This is awkward, isn't it? <laughs> he just shakes his head, yes. Corbin, help me. 12. 
Okay, good. So underneath our square root, we're going to have a 3, a 2, a 2, x cubed, y to the 5th, z to the 7th, right? Okay, do we have a pair? Okay, so he's saying 2 goes into 3 one time. 2 goes into 5. 2 goes into 7. Okay, so Corbin, what's left over underneath? Perfect. Who got it right? Raise your hand. Hey! That's it. Now look, you guys want to see something crazy? Now, when you get to math 3, now I'm talking as juniors, you're going to see a problem. We're not going to do it right now, thank goodness. But you're going to see a problem that looks like this. You're going to see like the square root of 16, x squared, y cubed, z to the fifth, times the square root of 4, x squared, y cubed, z to the sixth. And then you're going to see like times 3, x squared, y to the fourth. You're going to see that and you guys are going to learn how to do that. So what we're learning right now, you put a little pixie dust on it, some crumb frosted flakes, and you get that. Pretty cool. Oh, it's hard. No. You guys want to? No. Okay. Eight, two, part two, go.